gear seekers, I'm Nick. NZXT's launched their brand new Ace Tech based Kraken Z coolers with a built in fully programmable LCD screen on the pump top. We thought we'd do it, we always do, and show you how to install it the correct way. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the brand new NZXT Kraken Z73 cooler on an Intel desktop and HEDT based system. Make sure you watch the whole video before asking any questions. Let's get into it. This video is for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a review. We're not talking about thermals or acoustics or pricing because that's not what these videos are about. Now, every system, every motherboard, every case, every fan placement, and every setup is different. So make sure you research what will fit in your case before buying any parts for your build. Now, this guide is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the NZXT Kraken Z73 and Z63 cooler on an Intel Socket 11.5X base motherboard and Intel's 20XX HEDT motherboards. We also have an AMD version that you can check out in the top right hand corner right about now, or I think I'll probably chuck a link to that in the description as well. Now this guide can also be applied to the 280 mil version, the Z63 as well. So make sure you watch the whole video before asking questions because chances are I'm gonna answer all of the inevitable questions that you're gonna ask about in this video. So let's do what we always do and answer some of those questions right off the bat. And believe it or not, people do actually ask these questions. The motherboards in this video are the NZXT N7 Z390 and the Gigabyte X99 Phoenix SLI. The case used is the Fantex Eclipse P400A and the CPUs are the i7-9700K and the i7-6900K. Now these parts were purely chosen for demonstration purposes only. There's, yeah, this video is not a discussion about pricing or performance or anything to do with that, like I've said about four times already. Now, this installation is very similar to many other toolless Acer Tech based coolers, and yes, the fan placement in this video is actually correct, and it also depends on your case and the clearances and all that stuff in your case. No, the Z series coolers do not technically have RGB, however, it does have a Hue 2 hub compatibility that's built into it, that's what the extra cable's for, and it works with basically all NZXT products. Yes, you can put whatever fans you want on it, including NZXT Air RGB fans or literally any other fan that you want to put on it. And no, the fans included do not have any RGB, and the reason for that's pretty simple. NZXT designs these coolers with their own cases in mind, and the correct installation in their cases you just don't see the fans, so the RGB on the fans would be pretty pointless. Yes, everything you're seeing in this video for installation is included in the box. Yes, it will work with every single motherboard and CPU combo you're going to ask about. And yeah, from probably around the year 2008 until the foreseeable future. No, it will not work with AuraSync, Mystic Light, Polychrome RGB, RGB Fusion, or any RGB software that's not NZXT Cam. Yes, the thermal paste is included and it's pre-applied and you don't have to put any more on it. You can remove that thermal paste if you like and use your own thermal paste, but yeah, I usually don't recommend that because it's just easy to use the stuff on the cooler. And no, you don't have to fill the cooler, you don't have to top it up, you don't have to maintain it, you don't have to do anything. Yes, the wiring for connecting everything and the software configuration is the same for every single system. Now this includes every single AMD and Intel system, which is why we reuse those parts of our footage from our AMD guide. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, let's unbox the Kraken Z73 with the integrated LCD screen. How cool. What a time to be alive. 2020 is looking very, very cool for all things tech. All right, let's uh, pull out the installation manual. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We're not going to use it because that's what this video is for. All right, let's see what all the gear is inside of the box. I think the first thing we're going to take a look at is the three 120 millimeter included fans. Now, these fans are not RGB. Don't fret, don't worry, they're not RGB. You're not going crazy. <laughs> now, the next thing we're going to take a look at is all of the mounting gear. Now, this is for every type of socket insulation bar TR4 and Threadripper. But everything else that you're seeing in this packet is for all Intel based insulation. So nothing to fear, all your Intel insulation gear is right here. The next thing we've got here are all of the cables. Now these cables help us connect it to the motherboard 
and for all of the software control and all of the fan control. So yeah, pretty straightforward stuff to start off with. Let's pull the cooler itself out of the box so we can take a little bit of a closer look. There is some cardboard protecting the radiator, which is pretty standard. And as you can see, there is that big LCD screen on top of the cooler. And make sure you read the instructions that say, connect all cables before turning on. The reason why this is there is because you could possibly damage your cooler if you don't actually follow the instructions. Let's take a look at that pre-applied thermal paste. Yes, it has pre-applied thermal paste. You can either take this off or put your own stuff on, but I would recommend leaving this thermal paste on just because it makes it easier. And with the unboxing out of the way, let's dive right into the Intel 11.5X desktop part of the installation guide. Now this applies to regular Intel desktop boards, which includes every ASUS, every MSI, every Gigabyte, and every ASRock board. And if you have an HEDT motherboard, you can skip to the time code in the top right hand corner right now, or sit tight. For the Intel desktop installation for the 11.5X base motherboards, we're only going to need a few things here. We're not going to need heaps. All we're going to need are these bolts and these thumb nuts and the back plate. Now, the back plate is 100% required. There is no exceptions. You will need to install this. You can either do this with your motherboard in or out of your system. Now, in this corner, you'll need to slide the standoffs into the inner position, not the outer position, for it to fit on your 11.5X motherboards. Now I'm going to show you how to do this the correct way. I would recommend flipping the motherboard over and you actually need to feed the standoffs through these four holes that I've just shown and it will take a little bit of massaging and wiggling, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not too complicated. You probably will need to flex the bracket a little bit and it should go in pretty easily. And here's just another angle of it on the back of your motherboard. Now locate these four bolts right here. We're going to need four, that's what they look like. You'll notice that both ends are exactly the same length and just finger tighten them into the back plate very straightforward. You really can't mess this up and you can't over tighten them either. And once you're done, it will look a little something like this. The four bolts will be sticking out of the top of your motherboard. Now, the next thing we're going to do is plug in this little cable. I would recommend doing this first. Otherwise, it will get very difficult to plug in after you actually mount the water block to the top of your IHS of your CPU. Basically, it's very easy to plug in. Locate this hole or connector on the top of the water block and plug in that cable. Now, it only plugs in one way, so you can't mess this up. And yeah, it plugs in very easily and it, you don't need to force it to get in. Now, locate these thumb nuts. You'll need all four of them. And this is how we're going to mount the water block onto your CPU's IHS. Lower the pump top and water block onto your CPU's IHS and get one thumb nut to hold it into place and get another thumb nut and put it on the opposite corner so it holds into place and doesn't slide off. And just rinse and repeat that process until you've got all four sides in. And I would probably recommend using a screwdriver and tightening them on alternate corners just to distribute the pressure evenly. You'll want to pass the cables that we got previously through to the back of your system for easy cable management later and plugging everything in just makes your life easier. Locate the pump power control cable and then what you want to do is then locate the CPU opt header on your motherboard. Now it might be labeled something different on your motherboard but it's something similar like water pump and plug that cable straight in and yeah, Bob's your water pumping uncle. All right, let's dive into the Intel 20XX HEDT part of the install guide. Now this applies to Intel HEDT boards, which includes every ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, and ASRock board you're gonna ask about. Yeah, I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just answering every question. Now the HEDT insulation is the easiest, probably of all of the insulations that you can do with this cooler. And all you'll need are these bolts and the thumb nuts as well. Mounting hardware for these HEDT motherboards is already pre-built onto the socket, as I've just shown here, and this is where this next part will come into play. You'll need these four bolts. You'll notice that one end will be larger than the other end. And all you'll need to do is then go ahead and finger tighten them in each of the corners of the socket. This is super straightforward. And yeah, once you've done that, you're done. Now locate the thumb nuts because we're going to use this for the next part of the insulation. These are to attach the cooler to the socket mounting mechanism and lower your cooler onto the top of your CPU's IHS 
and do one thumb nut in one of the corners and then what you'll want to do is get another thumb nut and put it in the opposing corner just to hold the cooler into place and finger tighten all of the thumb nuts into each corner and I would recommend using a screwdriver to then tighten them in opposing corners to distribute the pressure evenly. You'll want to pass the cables that we got previously through to the back of your system for easy cable management later and plugging everything in just makes your life easier. Locate the pump power control cable and then what you want to do is then locate the CPU optetter on your motherboard. Now it might be labeled something different on your motherboard but it's something similar like water pump and plug that cable straight in and yeah. The next part of this guide is applicable to desktop and HEDT setups and it also applies to AMD installations as well which is why you're seeing an AMD motherboard and stuff used for this part. Now what we're going to do is mount the radiator in the front of the case and with the P400A this is the correct way to install the radiator. It does not fit at the top obviously because it's a 360 millimeter radiator. And what we're going to do is locate the mounting hardware for the fans. You'll need 12 screws in total just like I've shown here and 12 washers. Now this might be different for your case so just use this as a guide. You'll also need to locate the three fans that come in the box as well and put the washer onto the bolt and basically this is the easiest part of the installation. Feed the fan cables through to the back of your case for easy cable management later and put in all the screws. Very very easy and rinse and repeat that process until you're all done. You'll also notice that I, I just I like to finger tighten this in just to make your life a little bit easier and it's it's easy if you need to change the height of the radiator as well if it doesn't quite fit and then I will use the screwdriver at the end to make sure everything's in nice and tight. Now what we're going to do now is then plug in the PWM fan control. Now locate this cable as I've shown here, locate the fan power connectors from each of the three fans and plug them in. It's a very straightforward process. Plug all three of the fans in and your fans now have power. There's no RGB to worry about. Not in this type of insulation anyway. The next thing we're going to do is plug in the SATA or SATA power. This is very straightforward. Locate the SATA or SATA power coming out from the pump top and a spare SATA or SATA power connector from your power supply and plug it in and we're done. Now you'll also notice that there will be a spare cable here. Now don't freak out. This is basically a cable for the cooler to act like a Hue 2 controller. If you have some other NZXT RGB hardware, then you will plug it into this. Otherwise, you can just leave it dangling around at the back of your system somewhere, or you can use it for expanding your system later. Next up, we're going to plug in the USB. This is also very straightforward. Locate the USB cable that comes with the cooler and plug it into the top of the cooler. Now it only plugs in one way and there's only one other place to plug stuff in and after we do that you'll want to feed the cable through to the back of your computer so we can plug it in down the bottom of your motherboard into a USB 2.0 header. Now you'll want to locate this end of the cable which is the opposite end of that USB cable. What we're going to do is feed it into the bottom of the case then we're going to locate a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard. We're going to just plug it in just like that and now we have full software control for the Kraken. Alright, let's take a quick look at the software. Now what you want to do is download the latest version of NZXT Cam from NZXT's website. I'll put a link to that down in the description to make your life a little bit easier. Click the lighting tab, it will show your brand new Kraken cooler and you can basically go through and have a look at all of the settings. Now this is what the dual infographic setup looks like. I think this will be the, the look that most people will use to be honest. It's something that I'll probably use if I use this in my computer. There's a bunch of other settings you can go through. There's a little preview that shows you what everything looks like. And yeah, we'll take a quick look at some of 
the other things you can do like this one here for instance this is liquid temperature and yeah there's basically a drop down menu for everything you could possibly imagine i think carousel modes are actually pretty cool too you can set up a few different faces and have some timeouts for it to cycle through a bunch of different effects that's really cool because you can add in the animated stuff to that as well speaking of the animated stuff i think this is going to be everyone's most requested thing and i actually think this is what most people want it for we're going to show you how to do that and it's very very easy all you want to do is have an animated file somewhere on your computer and yeah i'm going to call it a gif or a gif it doesn't matter how you pronounce it guys i see a lot of people getting angry about this anyway click upload gif or gif or whatever and it'll have a little cropping tool to crop how much you want to show on the top of your cooler it's very, very straightforward. Obviously, you've got the animated gear, so you can intro animation here. Click save. It'll have a little preview. And if you had any luck, your cooler should be fully running and it will look a little something like this. I think I covered pretty much everything in this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to head on over to our Discord. There's a link to that below. Or yeah, just drop a comment down below. And make sure you read the comment section because myself or someone probably would have already answered all the questions you've had already. Please take that into consideration before asking any questions on this video. I only say that because I don't want to waste your time and I'm not trying to sound mean with the way that I say stuff. It's just I want to answer all of your questions as clearly and concisely as possible. And as far as pricing is concerned, we know it's expensive. We've heard it to death, trust me. But as I said in the AMD version of the video, people who want it and can afford it are still gonna buy it regardless of your complaints about the price. That's just how it is. If you've got the money and you want it, you can buy it. I'm not gonna stop you. Now I've included links to all the software required in the description of this video as well to save you a little bit of time if you can't find it. But yeah, it's all pretty straightforward. And if you like this video and it helped you, please consider liking, subscribing, or consider supporting us by clicking on that little join button down there or on Floatplane. Yes, we are on Floatplane. And if you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us we hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And if you're wondering why our um, NZXT N7Z390 board only has one stick of RAM in it, well, all of the RAM slots died except that one slot on the motherboard. The things, these things happen when you're making videos, there's nothing you can do about it. Anyway, thanks for watching.